let's let's talk more about authority. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the 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 authority difference differential. Okay. Let's talk about power. Let's talk about mutuality in let's the teacher-student relationship and in our communities. How has that shifted in your experience from what it used to be to what it's becoming? It's becoming something new, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have centers in U.S. who who vote their teachers into positions of <laughs> of power, right? Mm -hmm. After but, having but, certain negative experiences, etc. That's, that's et not new in the because there are Christian congregations which did that yes, long, long ago. But it's new in Buddhism. Yes. Yeah. And then, specifically, to, to see while certain deep features of experience, we, we, we tend to call spiritual, mm -hmm. remain sturdy and, and resilient over time. And we may say, essentially, not much has changed for seekers from old China or India and, and, and the modern world. There are certain psychological specifically identity structures that have shifted tremendously. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean in the relationship of, of, of student and teacher? And, and how does that work out in, in actually teaching techniques, in, in guiding people? Of course, you know, it's very individual and idiosyncratic to a certain extent, but, but there must be certain features that you have observed. Well, I, I want to pick up on something that Diane said, because uh, I've observed exactly the same thing. that. And I experienced it myself that when I be entered into Tibetan training, and I trained very traditionally, and, um, living as a, not, I wasn't a monk, but in the retreat, it was in a monastic setting. Mm -hmm. And when I came out and came to Los Angeles, uh, I was in my late 30s, uh, chronologically. Spiritually, I was arguably somewhat mature, because I'd had all this training, but sociologically, and professionally and emotionally, I was still 21, 22, or something like that. And I had a lot of growing up to do. Mm -hmm. And I have observed uh, that anybody who engages the traditional age in Mosul regresses psychologically. Right. And I think, mm -hmm. I, and That's there's a I huge think. backlash yeah. from that. Yes. One of the things it always, that, it's some moment. Yeah. So one of the things that I try to do in my own work is, uh, even though I would structure retreats somewhat you know, the uh, residential retreats uh, with set meditation peers and so forth, so I've moved away from that now. Um, I would try to treat, teach, uh, treat people as adults. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, I had invited a, a colleague to attend one of my retreats and said, well, what are people doing jogging and reading and things like that? And well, I was letting them manage their own time. When they meditated, they really meditated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was good, and she acknowledged that that was actually happening. Mm -hmm. But there was this difference coming from these uh, models where you have, as you said, this very hierarchical thing. And I've, what I find is that I have a very different kind of relationship with my students than I had with my teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, I, I think the power discussion is a really, really important one and one that really needs to be unpacked because, in, again, in a, in a traditional model, the power is imbued in the teacher. But the power is not simply the power of dharma as it's taught, or, and maybe even more importantly, the power of transmission. And the teacher's job really is to help cut away what is manifesting in your body, mind, behavior that's just keeping you from seeing true nature. That's the power that you want to give a Zen teacher, to keep you know, cutting that away, and, and that by giving your teacher power, by joining your mind to the, power, to the power of the teacher's transmission, you have that experience. That's the direct mind-to-mind -mind transmission. But that power is often conflated with the power of running an organization, mm -hmm. with the power of telling you about your love life, mm -hmm. with the power <laughs> of determining how money is allocated and spent. So it's almost like the family temple of Asia gets transplanted here, and in fact, you know, it may be that you have an extremely powerful transmission, but that your leadership in an organization is not particularly well developed. And so unpacking the whole power discussion becomes very important. What is my power in relationship to your life? My, the only power I want in relationship to your life is to give it back to you. Mm -hmm. That's all I want, mm -hmm. is to give it back to you. And I think sometimes that gets conflated, where you're organizing around the transmission I end up wielding power in your life, then in fact I probably shouldn't be. 
You know, so it's it's a it's a very important and deep well, uh, unpacking that needs to happen in this culture. We've started doing it, and some of the intensity gets lost. I think that that when we get a little bit more democratic, that you know, there's a there's a force and there's an intensity when you practice in those kind of strong hierarchical container, containers. Well, I'm going back to something that's written in the 15th, 16th century in Tibet. Uh, because in, in the Tibetan tradition, you have this uh, notion of samaya, uh, which is a very powerful relationship between teacher and student. And the way that it is, uh, many people understand it is that you have to do whatever your teacher tells you in every aspect of your life. Right. It's obedience to your teacher. And uh, what Tulak Treng was... Uh, Sarah, what, when, did, when was he writing? That's Thank you. Uh, she, know, <laughs> she knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's awesome. he, he, he says very specifically in his commentary on uh, one of the major um, practices in the Tibetan tradition, this only applies to your spiritual life. Hmm. So I think I agree with you that what's happened in the cultures is that a lot of that stuff is conflated and we just absorb that right. coming to the West. And we not, not, I think we have to go back to what it actually meant originally, that in the area of spiritual life, there is an authority structure, and it's appropriate to some extent because there is a transmission. Mm -hmm. And as you say, I agree with you, and Thich Nhat Hanh says the same thing, that the function of the teacher is to plant the teacher in the student. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, mm -hmm. but, uh, but to separate out everything else mm -hmm. uh, for the appropriate functioning in our society. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I see a lot of Buddhist institutions struggling with that transition. Yeah, it's, it's challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you.